Hey, Francesca, are you filming it? Yeah, come in, come in. Oh, yeah, there you are. So, okay. <laughs> um, the reason I asked you to start filming is I was kind of bored in my room. I was walking around. I started reading some stuff. And I think that, well, I don't know if it's actually a video that we can post, but it's worth checking out at the very least. You should come. What is you, it? You'll find uh, it's it's unique. It's interesting. At the, at the very least, it's interesting. Okay, you ready? Okay, so first, we are staying in Appa Hotel. It's a hotel chain in Japan. It's a huge business chain. I believe it's the biggest in the country, but I'm not 100% certain on that. It's one of our final nights in Japan. I think we're here one more day. And uh, so uh, let, let me just start. Have a seat. I'll, uh, I'll take you through it step by step. So I was in the bathroom. And I was looking at the amenities, and some of them were kind of like borderline sexist a little bit. Um, some of them talk about pure masculinity and how a man must find himself. Anyway, so I looked at the razor, and it says, a wise hawk shows his claws. And I thought, that's, that's a really weird thing for a hotel razor to say to you. I kept looking around the room, and I came across all the literature that they put in place of, I guess, where our Bible would be in the West. And the first thing I came across was this magazine called Appletown, which I thought I thought it looked kind of cute, I guess, because it's called Appletown, which is, I don't know, it sounds like it should be a magazine for fruit. <laughs> and it had this little title, Japan has finally begun breaking free of the post-war regime, which, I'm not gonna lie, was not exactly what I expected from the magazine called Appletown. And then I moved on to the next book, and it had this beautiful character here. Um, nice hat, nice little leopard print scarf. And I thought to myself, who is this man? And I started to look through it, and it's just a bunch of basically those same sentences that were on the, that were on the uh, toiletries, <laughs> um, which was kind of funny. I thought that was amusing. So I kept him out. And the next thing I picked up, this is where the story started to get very strange to me. It's the theoretical modern history or the real history of Japan. And I think the only word here that really works is theoretical because it's, well, let's look through it. It's pretty denialist. Um, I got to page six and it starts talking about the Nanking Massacre. Which, first of all, any hotel that's talking about a massacre in its literature is already kind of questionable. But for those who don't know, the Nanking Massacre was a World War II atrocity that took place when the Japanese military slaughtered a bunch of civilians in China. Um, a really terrible thing, a very big sticking point between the Chinese and Japanese governments, and it's a big focus of Japanese nationalists to deny that this happened. And this magazine or book denies that it happened. So I was already kind of um, shocked by the time I flipped the page and it got to comfort women. And again, for those who don't know, comfort women is a polite term to describe forced prostitution in World War II where the Japanese military picked up women from surrounding nations like Korea and China and forced them into prostitution to follow the military. Again, something that the ultra-nationalists of Japan just flat out denied. Moving on, by page 11 and 12, it pretends that Pearl Harbor was actually a United States false flag operation where they blew up the USS Arizona so that they could declare war on Japan and that Japan did nothing wrong, which uh, there's so much evidence to prove that's incorrect. And so there's actually three of these in the hotel here um, and they're all just like this they're all basically denialist propaganda from an ultra nationalist japanese perspective and so that was really weird obviously and i started to google further research further and it's all the work of our man in the leopard print here um, <laughs> the ceo of this place he calls himself seiji fuji in the writing but that's not his real name and i started thinking about it further and further and it occurred to me that I'm happy he does this. Not because I agree with the propaganda. I think it's disgusting. It's absolutely factually incorrect. But I like that he does this because now I know where the money goes. Is that not better? 
Is it not better that he puts this propaganda in his rooms so you know instantly, well, this is what you're supporting? I mean, I what, my, got my Huawei Nexus phone. I got Old Spice Champion. Where's the money from Old Spice going? I have no idea. I don't know who owns it. I don't know what they do with the money. Is it not better that a company tells you flat out where those profits go, what those profits are, are looking to do? Imagine if Nestle said on every chocolate bar, we deny the fundamental right to water around the world. Or if uh, Abercrombie and Fitch shirt said, we don't want fat people to wear our clothes. Would that not be at the very least better for the consumer to decide? When Appa Hotel, when this hotel group started moving into the United States and Canada, where they have around 50 hotels right now, the literature actually was anti-Semitic. It was no longer just about Japanese nationalism, but it actually turned to anti-Semitism. And instead of shutting down the hotels, protesters convinced them to remove the anti-Semitism from the rooms. And I'm not saying that's better or worse, but I do question it. Because now, if you stay in those hotels in Canada, you're supporting anti-Semitism still. It's not like they stopped being anti-Semitic but you don't know you're doing it. Now it's harder to tell. Now you have to Google in advance. And honestly, who's Googling every single purchase they make, every single hotel room they stay in to say, where does this money go? I don't think anybody's doing that. And if you are, kudos to you, but you must spend a heck of a lot of time deciding where your money goes. So is it not better to have a piece of nationalist propaganda if you're a nationalist hotel? If you are, Mr. Uh, Leopard Skin here, I'd argue that, that it's better that he does this, personally. I'm not saying that it's right, I'm not saying I agree with what he says, but at least I know not to stay in this hotel anymore. This is rare earth. <laughs> this is uh, quite the hotel. This is rare. Oh, wait. Oh, I didn't even notice him on the back here. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah. Wait. That is a man who has uh, a lot of hats. You know a man who has this hat owns so many hats. You know who paid for those hats? I did. We did, unfortunately. I apologize. 